Our next task is to solve the same pairs of simultaneous equations, except this time we're going to use the method of substitution. Now the reason why we're going to use the same pairs of simultaneous equations is to show that irrespective of which method we use, the results are still the same. And the reason the results are the same is because there's only ever one unique pair of x values and y values. So our first example was 5x plus 3y equals 51 for equation 1. And equation 2 was 2x minus 3y equals minus 2. When we use the method of substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange either equation 1 or equation 2 to make x or y the subject. And once we have an equation with x or y as the subject, we're then going to substitute it into the other equation. So if we were to use equation 1 and rearrange it to make x the subject, we would then substitute in the new equation for x into equation 2. Now this is best seen by an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to rearrange it to make x the subject. Now the reason why I've chosen to make x the subject is because the coefficient of x is smaller than the coefficient of y. Or more accurately, the magnitude of the coefficient of x is smaller than the magnitude of the coefficient of y. And you'll see why this ends up making things a little bit easier as we work through the example. So if I want to make x the subject, and at the moment I've got 2x minus 3y equals minus 2. The first thing I'm going to need to do is to add 3y to each side. So I'm going to get 2x equals minus 2 plus 3y. All I've done is add 3y to each side of the equation. Now the next thing I need to do is divide each side of that equation by 2 to get x on its own. So how I do that, x equals, well minus 2 divided by 2 is just minus 1, and 3y divided by 2, or 3 over 2y, can also be expressed as 1.5y. So 3y divided by 2 is 1.5y. So now I have a new equation for x, which I can substitute into the other equation or into equation 1. So equation 1 becomes 5 times x. But I'm not going to use x, instead I'm going to use the equation that we've just found for x. Minus 1 plus 1.5 times y plus 3y equals 51. Next I need to multiply out my brackets, so I've got 5 times minus 1, which is minus 5, and I've got 5 times 1.5y. Well, 5 times 1.5y is 7.5y, plus 3y equals 51. We've seen this type of thing before, we can collect like terms, so the minus 5 is unaffected. 7.5y plus 3y is 10.5y. And the right hand side is also unaffected. We have a simple linear equation here. What I need to do in order to get y on its own is strip away everything that doesn't contain y. So the first thing I need to do is to add 5 to each side. When I add 5 to the left hand side, I'll be left with 10.5y and when I add 5 to the right hand side, I'll be left with 56. The final step then in order to get y on its own is to divide the left and right hand side by 10.5. 10.5y divided by 10.5 will give me y. And 56 divided by 10.5 will give me the 5.3 recurring. Now that we've found our value for y, we can work back through in order to find our value for x. So I'm going to use equation 2, which tells me that 2x minus 3y, but I can use my value of y of 5.3 recurring. So minus 3 times 5.3 recurring equals minus 2. 
I can simplify that to give me 2x, 3 times 5.3 recurring is just going to be 16. So minus 3 times 5.3 recurring is minus 16 equals minus 2. My next step is to add 16 to each side. Remember my purpose here is to get the x on its own. When I add 16 to each side, 2x minus 16 plus 16 becomes 2x. Minus 2 plus 16 becomes 14. And then the final step is to divide each side by 2. 2x divided by 2 is just x. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. And these are the same values that I got when I used the method of elimination. In our second example, we had 5x plus 2y equaling 47. And we had 2x minus y equaling 8. Now once again, the most straightforward step is for us to look for the number here, or the term here, with the lowest coefficient. And that can be for x or for y. Now as I look here, the lowest coefficient is here. Now the reason I look for the lowest coefficient is when I start rearranging the equations for that variable, I'm less likely to end up with any difficult fractions to resolve. So what I'm going to do this time, we've got equation 1, we've got equation 2. So I'm going to rearrange equation 2 to make y the subject. So if 2x minus y equals 8, the first step I'm going to do in order to get y on its own is I'm going to subtract 2x from each side to give me minus y equals 8 minus 2x. Now the next step is I'm going to change the sign of each side of this equation. So change the sign each side. And by changing the sign, it's the same as multiplying each term by minus 1. So if I change the sign of minus y, I'll get y. If I change the sign of 8, I'll get minus 8. And if I change the sign of minus 2x, I'll get plus 2x. Now I have an equation for y that I've derived from equation 2, and I'm going to substitute that back into equation 1. So taking equation 1, equation 1 stated that 5x plus 2y equals 47, but instead of using y now, I'm going to use the minus 8 plus 2x that I've just derived. So now I've got 5x plus 2 times minus 8 plus 2x equals 47. Simplifying through, I'm going to get 5x. Now 2 times minus 8 is minus 16. 2 times plus 2x is plus 4x. And that still equals 47. My next step then is to collect like terms. So gathering all of the x's together, I'm going to get 9x. And I'm also going to add 16 to each side. So we get 9x equals 63. Well, if 9x equals 63, dividing each side by 9 is going to give me x equals 63 over 9 which just equals 7. And hopefully you recall from when we solved this for elimination, we also found that x equals 7. The final step then is to find our value for y. And this time I'm going to use equation 1, which states that 5x, well we now know that x equals 7, so 5 times 7, plus 2y equals 47. All I've done there is substitute my value of x back in. Well, 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2y equals 47. Subtracting 35 from each side now, I'm going to be left with 2y equals 12. And dividing each side by 2, I'm going to be left with y 
equals 6. Therefore, x equals 7 and y equals 6, solving by substitution. Our final example is 4x minus 3y equals 10 for equation 1 and 6x plus 4y equals 49 for our equation 2. Once again, I'm looking for the lowest coefficient of x or y, which here we can see is this one here. So the first step I'm going to take for solving this pair of simultaneous equations is to rearrange equation 1 to make y the subject. Well, equation 1 states that 4x minus 3y equals 10. And I'm going to begin by minusing 4x from each side of that equation. Minusing 4x from the left hand side is going to leave me with minus 3y. And minusing 4x from the right hand side is going to give me 10 minus 4x. The next step for getting y on its own is to divide each side of that equation by minus 3. If I divide the left side by minus 3, well minus 3y divided by minus 3 is just y. And now I need to divide each term on the right hand side of this equation by minus 3. Well 10 divided by minus 3 is minus 3.3 recurring. Now please don't be put off by the fact that there's a recurring decimal. It's the process that we're interested in. Providing we follow the process, then we should obtain the correct answers. Next, we've got minus 4x divided by minus 3. Well, minus 4 divided by minus 3 is plus 1.3 recurring. So we have plus 1.3 recurring, lots of x. Again, don't be put off by the fact that the coefficient of x is now a recurring decimal. So now that we've rearranged equation 1 to make y the subject, we're going to input that value of y into equation 2. So taking equation 2 this time, we have 6x plus 4y, but we now know that y is minus 3.3 recurring plus 1.3 recurring lots of x. And our right hand side is going to remain as 49. Next, we're going to multiply out the brackets. So we have 6x plus 4 times minus 3.3 recurring is actually minus 13.3 recurring. Feel free to do that on your calculators, but all we're doing is the same as before. We're multiplying 4 by minus 3.3 recurring. And now I've got 4 times 1.3 recurring in order to get our coefficient of x. Well, 4 times 1.3 recurring is just 5.3 recurring. So we have 5.3 recurring lots of x. And that equals 49. Our next step is to collect like terms. So if I've got 6x and I'm adding 5.3 recurring lots of x, I'm going to end up with 11.3 recurring lots of x minus 13.3 recurring equals 49. And now I need to add 13.3 recurring to each side. Remember I'm stripping everything away until I get x on its own. So I'll have 11.3 recurring lots of x equals, well adding 13.3 recurring to 49 is going to give me 62.3 recurring. Now my final step then to get x on its own is to take the 62.3 recurring and divide it by the 11.3 recurring which equals 5.5. Once again you'll note that that was the same value of x that we got when we used the other method or the method of elimination. Now we're on to our final step. This time I'm going to input that value of x into equation 1. I have 4 times x, well x is 5.5, minus 3y, remember I'm trying to find y, and that equals 10. Well, 4 times 5.5 is 22, so I have 22 minus 3y 
equals 10. My next step to getting y on its own is to strip away this term here, which I'm going to do by minusing 22 from each side. 22 minus 3y minus 22 is just going to leave minus 3y. And 10 minus 22 is minus 12. Final step, divide each side by minus 3. Minus 3y divided by minus 3 is just y. And minus 12 divided by minus 3 is just 4. Therefore, our values of x and y are x, 5.5, and y, 4.